Today, I'm here in Austin, Texas, Camp Mabry, and we're gonna talk about the mass exodus of migrants coming to your town. Stay tuned. If you watch the news lately, you know there is a mass exodus of migrants trying to cross borders and to come to the United States. They're coming from Central America, mostly from uh, Honduras, and right now there's over 7,000 people marching. They already crossed through Guatemala, they already crossed to Mexico, so they're halfway through the United States. So this is really, really important, and you need to almost expect them all right if the federal government doesn't stop them at the border then they're gonna be in your town and you need to know how to react so as a law enforcement community how are we supposed to act how are we supposed to react to this type of behavior and this type of problems coming to your town well first of all if your department is really small or if you're working for a big city well right now the infrastructure is not there we were not expecting these people they're just trying to come over here and they expect that we open our arms and everything is ready for them however that's not the fact and you know it some of the things that could happen is shelter food where we're we gonna put these people there's f over 7,000 of them and uh, I heard lately actually there's now it's like almost like 10,000 so I'm not sure you know there's speculation on the numbers but just 5,000 of them coming to your town either pass through your town or to stay in your town well that's gonna be a big problem it's gonna bring a lot of problems to your department if you don't have the right content contingency plan so again if you don't have that contingency plan you have to react as it happens if right now 5,000 people just start walking through here, where are we gonna put them? Do we have enough food? Do you have enough personnel working 24 seven to take care of them, protect them? Because you know there's people that are not happy they're coming in. They might try to hurt them. And they, they are part of, now they're gonna be in US soil and then we need to protect them. So you know that they, a lot of the crime is gonna go up, not just part of the uh, the people that are coming in but also like I said people attacking them it could happen okay so one of the things with crime from the people coming in from these migrants trying to seek asylum is that they might commit crimes out of desperation or they might commit crimes because they already done it in their country we don't know who they are okay we haven't vet them there must be people they may like some males females they may, they were in jail before for certain crimes that we don't know about, all right? And also there might be people who belong to criminal organizations. And we need to really weed out all these people. Yes, there's children, there's uh, uh, females that are pregnant. And yes, I understand the humanitarian part of our job is to protect them, but there's laws that need to be enforced, especially at the border. Now, how are you gonna coordinate with the federal government or with your local agencies, for example, with the fire department? You need to coordinate with them, with the emergency personnel, the emergency service, EMS. There has to be a big, big, big coordination among everybody. Are you ready for that? Do you have this plan ready? If not, that is gonna be a problem. Now, border towns are gonna have the major impact at the beginning. Border towns need to work with the federal government to get the supplies, to get to stop people from uh, breaking in into our country illegally. For example, Browns, Brownsville, Texas, anywhere in the, in the south border of Texas, anywhere in um, Arizona, New Mexico, California. And you know what's the problem? The problem is that some people do not agree with us stopping them, even if we are enforcing federal law but also there are cities, there are sanctuary cities, they're willing to take them. So these people are taking a big leap of, leap of faith to come over here, but that's a problem. 
because if they're not ready and we're not ready, it's going to end up in a catastrophe. So I understand that um, as a human being, you want to help other people and that's what we're here for, right? As a first responders, we want to help other people. I talked to migrants before. I understand what they've been through, their journey. It's not easy. It's not easy to leave your country, you know, to leave your family behind. But as people of your own country, you need to fight for your own country. You cannot just come over here to this land and pretend that we're just gonna open our borders every time you wanna come over. That's not gonna happen. People need to understand. If you're listening, if you're a migrant and you're listening, you need to understand that you need to stop coming this way. You need to turn around and fight for your country. That's what happens here in America and that's what needs to happen in your own country. As law enforcement, we are put in this type of situations. However, we are here to protect the citizens that already live here first. Yes, I understand the uh, migrant population is growing, but at the same time, we need to enforce the laws. And that's what we're here for. So I urge you to contact your local uh, congressman, senator, and I urge you to get the federal government involved with the Mr. President uh, Donald Trump. He needs to do something, either send more troops down to the south, southern part of the border, or he needs to talk to the Border Patrol. It needs to be a big, big plan because, believe me, 7,000 people trying to cross the border, if they are willing to walk like thousands and thousands of miles, I doubt they're going to stop at the border. So please, please, please be prepared. All right. And I hope, um, I hope everything turns out good, but if not, that's what we're here for. So please watch your six.